For the past seven years, Dr. Gurjanath Budraj and his team at the University of Technology have been compiling the annual GEM report for Jamaica. GEM stands for Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, a survey of entrepreneurial activity in 54 countries. It looks at how many people in these countries are starting their own business and why, and importantly, how are they doing? In Jamaica, the findings are compelling. One out of every five Jamaicans interviewed were planning to start a business within three years, and very few of them were afraid of failing. Nearly 80% thought they had what it takes to run a successful business. Jamaicans are not very much afraid of, of failure in starting businesses. They seem to be a very brave person who are ready to take a risk. Jamaican believe that they have the required skills and capabilities to start a business. In fact, a high percentage, 80% of, of, of persons in this country believe they have such skills. Now, the study measures how many people have actually acted on these perceived opportunities and capabilities. It's called the T-rate, T-E-A, standing for Total Early Stage Entrepreneurial Activity. Jamaica's 2011 T rate is almost 14%, which is somewhere in the middle compared to the other countries studied. But looking back at the past few years, the island's T rate tells an interesting story. The year 2009 is, is very significant because, you know, the global depression started in about 2007, 2008. And one of the probable, probable reasons why the index jumped to 23 from 16% the previous year was that persons were, were losing jobs and they had to find some work. But it fell dramatically the next year to 10% before increasing a little more to 13.7 last year. Anne-Marie Baker is an entrepreneur with a small construction company. She launched Get It Straight Construction six years ago after gaining experience on the government-run Lift Up Jamaica project where she and community members repaired schools, built sidewalks and replaced zinc fences with concrete walls. I'm a sole owner and because of construction work, we normally hire when we have a, pro when we have a project. So on and off, it can be up to 10 persons, it can be up to 20 persons, it can be five persons, it depends on the type of job and, or, and when I get the job. So I don't keep a full staff like I have a secretary, which I do most of the secretary work because if I don't have a job, I can't pay. But if, if I have a project and need qualified persons in certain areas, that is where I go and I mostly on a short term basis. What are some of the challenges that you've experienced working in this industry? I know you said that it's really hard to get a contractor to get a job. Paperwork, you know. Um, we, there's a process for you to have a company and there is a process for you to bid on government work, you have to have a license to do so. Document and um, it's a bit tedious if, if you have any idea of, of the type of paperwork and stuff that we go through. I thought it was a small business person problem, but um, speaking to the grade one construct, construction persons, they also have problems with the paperwork. Since she's been unable to meet the requirements for a license, it's been about two years since Anne-Marie's company has had an actual construction job. In the meantime, she has to find other ways to make ends meet. Buy stuff in, in, in town and sell them back to my community persons, you know, stuff like that. So a retail trade. A retail, you know and my family business was um, meat business, butchering and stuff like that. So from now, from time to time, I do jerk pork because I have a, a bar, so but it is rented, so you know, so the customers on weekends and stuff like that can get jerk pork to eat. And I'm trying that, you know, just to fit in at the moment because at the moment the economy is down and we are waiting to hear what is going to go on with the IMF and all of that. So in the meantime, you know, 
we have to try and make ends meet. Her situation is not much different from hundreds of other entrepreneurs interviewed by Dr. Budraj's team. Many of them are propelled into business for themselves, not because they see a viable business opportunity, but because they need to earn a living. I also noticed that many entrepreneurs tend to start businesses in Jamaica out of necessity as opposed to opportunity in some of the higher income countries. This is not the case. Tell me about that. It is, it is known by, by most students now that it's very difficult to get a job. Therefore, we need companies, entrepreneurs who could start up businesses that can generate jobs. Most of the businesses that they enter into, we found, were retail, retail trade and agriculture. And retail trade could be a temporary endeavor. Could be this person don't have a job and they go into the retail trade just to make ends meet. Uh, and why we have this high discontinuation rate could probably be partly explained by that when people switch from the retail trade and agriculture and find jobs somewhere else. The discontinuation rate includes businesses that failed and also those that the owners sold. Jamaica's discontinuation rate is the highest among all 54 countries studied at 12.7%. That means nearly one out of every eight business owners in Jamaica have closed down or sold their business in the past 12 months. For Anne-Marie, it means her business is simply lingering in the sidelines. Now, with all these challenges, all the difficulties that you've named, not having a, a contract in two years, have you ever considered just throwing in the towel and giving up? Not really, you know, because I'm, 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 I'm not just coming out of school or something. It's years worth of experience in the business. And if, if, if we don't have that, that endurance, which is the NCC and the OCG, um, strenuous um, requirements. We'd be doing good and the country would be doing good, you know? Because of course, because of, of, of the corruption, they brought in the NCC and the OCG. We don't have a problem with it. But is it working for the country? Is it working for the people in the country? It's more like a police out there that we are paying to do, to, to stop us from work. So how does Jamaica fix these problems and nurture entrepreneurs so that they in turn can create jobs and grow the economy? I think the, the economy of Jamaica is in a very critical state at this point. If you look at international data, doing business has been especially difficult over the last few years. Government could set up some kind of, of mechanism to not fully rescue these persons, but look at the reasons for failing, maybe guide them, assist them afterwards, and see if you can put them back on their feet to continue rather than leave off. I don't think the country has an entrepreneurship policy as yet, although they are in, in the different phases of drafting out one. If I was the Minister of Trade right now, Mr. Ant Anthony Hilton, Minister of Commerce, Investment and Trade, and you could only tell me one thing, what would you tell me? I think this government really understands our problem, but is to fix it is the problem. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, when we say emergency, it's a bit, you have to say dying for it to be classified as emergency. But we have had debts because of this problem in small businesses. It's related, it's own, not because it's not the, prob the, the, the business who fell down and, and kill you, but stress relation, a lot of stuff, you know? So I would ask the government and Mr. Hilton to even edit, because I know Mr. Hilton is passionate about this problem, and because he has to have a coalition of, of, of people to deal with the problem, that's a bit tricky. But um, it's really urgent, really, really urgent. In part two of our focus on entrepreneurship, we'll take a look at some of the GEM report's recommendations for high growth businesses and some of those who are getting it right.